Hi, everyone. This work is joint work with my advisor, Max Wiginski. We're in the cornfields. You can visit us. So today I'm going to be talking about generative modeling, where for input data x and labels y, we care about not the posterior of y given x, but the joint distribution of x and y. So when x is a latent Markov sequence, say x0 through xk, then this factorizes very succinctly in a way that you've no doubt all seen before. When we want to take k large, well, the world is compositional, as Jan LeCun tells us, meaning that we can represent very complicated functions using repeated compositions of simple functions. If we have a Gaussian transition kernel, then where the mean and the variance possibly are neural net functions of the previous state, then we can have very nice rich models and moreover, perform stochastic backprop on them. You've probably all seen this paper before. More specifically, if we have, say, each random variable corresponding to a hidden layer, then we get this sort of recursive sequence where the observation is conditioned on the final latent variable. Okay, so it's 2019, Yan LeCun is on the right side of history, and now everyone and their mom knows that the more layers you have, the better in terms of representation power. <laughs> so logically this means that without resource constraints, you should have an infinite number of layers, because that's the absolute best thing ever, right? Well, I mean, of course not, because while well, you're gonna say that resource constraints are a thing, and that computers do discrete stuff, so why should we even bother going through the trouble of doing things in continuous time? So we contend that continuous time is really nice and useful because it enables the stochastic control problem formulation that gives us a unified view of both exact sampling, which is hard to do in general, and variational difference, which we can do in most cases if we choose our class distractibly. So to look at this control theoretically, if we have some reference diffusion process with arbitrary drift and constant diffusion coefficient over a finite time interval, say zero to one, apply to it a control so that we get this sort of controlled analog where everything's the same but with the drift term adjusted. Now let's consider the following cost minimization problem. We want to minimize the total cost given by the control cost quadratic over the length of the horizon and some terminal cost for some non-negative cost function here g. So our first result is about the solution to this cost minimization problem. First, the minimum total cost, minimum, yeah, minim, sorry, minimum control cost is, minimum total cost, sorry, typo, bad typo, is given by the, the terminal cost using the uncontrolled, of the uncontrolled diffusion, and the corresponding optimal control is given by negative grad of the value function, where the value function is the terminal cost of the uncontrolled process conditioned on its being in state x at time t. So the proof relies on a cute log transform that gives the solution of a PDE that turns out to be the Bellman equation and the result follows by verification. For some intuition, you can think of the optimal control as doing for all times t steepest descent on the value function without wasting any effort in weird other directions. So for a sense of what this gives us, first notice that because the controlled and uncontrolled processes differ only by change of drift, Gerson-Off's theorem tells us that the divergence between their pathwise probability measures is exactly the control cost that you've expended. And this lets us define the free energy as follows, which in turn gives us the following variational principle, that the total cost using any sort of control, any admissible control, is lower bounded by the terminal cost of the uncontrolled process and equality is attained if and only if you use the optimal control. So this sets us up for the question of sampling. Consider the Schrodinger bridge problem of starting from a galaxy and finding some control, a drift, here u, that lets you attain some target density, the density that you desire with respect to a galaxy and by time one, say, while minimizing the control effort that you've spent. This is a classic problem that had many treatments from many different perspectives over the years. I've listed just a very tiny subset. So our control theoretic view lets us formulate this problem in the variational way that we've just discussed to say that any control that achieves that terminal distribution that you desire will have a control cost that is lower bounded by the divergence between the terminal, your target, and initial Gaussian measures. And moreover, the optimal control is this thing called the Fulmer drift. So 
red log of that expectation you see over there, which we'll call QTF in what follows for the heat semigroup. And you can get this by subbing in the target density F for the control cost in what we had before. So of course, in general, it's not possible to solve the Bellman equation and get the optimal control in closed form. So let's consider instead the problem of approximating the log likelihood using some IID number of observations. So again, via some substitution, we see that if we sub in the negative log likelihood for the cost function, we get the variational principle in the form that's readily used for variational Bayes. So free energy minimization will tighten the upper bound on your true log likelihood. And this just means that you pick some nice class of controls and your favorite optimization method, you go to town and you'll end up at a local opt. Okay, so the, now I've hopefully convinced you that you can do sampling and efficient inference with these sorts of models, you should probably verify that they're actually sufficiently expressive, meaning that they can, by time one, say, produce some target density that is as rich as anything you can hope to achieve with the neural net. So to that end, consider both the exact but non-parametric Fulmer drift, which gives you the target with minimal control effort by time one. And on the other hand, some approximate param parametric scheme that gets, that gets you to within epsilon and KL of the target law by time one. So naturally, if we think about the controls drifts from, taken from the class of neural nets, we should be able to represent, say, the Fulmer drift quite efficiently and get to within epsilon of the target by time one, because neural nets can represent almost everything, as we've all heard. And that's pretty much what our next result shows. So if the target density is strictly positive, and both it and its gradient are Lipschitz and can be efficiently represented by neural net over some compact set, for any epsilon, there is a neural net such that the target density it achieves target distribution it achieves is within epsilon. The terminal distribution it achieves is within epsilon of the target by time one. So effectively this says that an efficient neural net, neural net representation of your target, if it's possible, efficient, enables efficient sampling from your desired density. And moreover, these neural SDEs, so to speak, can be fit to samples from the target with gradient descent or SGD using that property. So there are a few steps to the proof. So just for a sketch, first step is using a probabilistic method argument to show that for any epsilon, there is, for any epsilon, there is a uniform approximation to this QTF, which comprises your heat semigroup that your former drift is made out of. And that you'll be able to approximate it uniformly using IED Gaussians. The next step is reasoning about the gradient, which is also efficiently if represented using neural nets if your, if your function itself is. And then the complexity of arithmetic operations like division min max for truncating outside of our set. So Fulmer drift, grad F over F of stuff has this nice representation via neural net. Last step is using Gersonov to bound the divergence between your approximated Fulmer density distribution and your target. And that's pretty much it. If you want to know about unbiased estimators after you discretize, you can find me afterwards. Okay, thanks.